Last video I talked about first-person narrators. So in this video I thought I would dissect the techniques a writer is using to create an impactful and unique first-person narrator. That is Death in the Book Thief by Marcus Suckick. This novel has won multiple literary awards, been translated into over 30 languages, and made into a major motion picture. But like many books turned into a movie, the novel itself paints a much fuller picture of both the world and the characters, and you really get to see inside Death's head on a different level in the novel than you do in the movie, because of what Zuckick is doing with the form and the word choice. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you impact your readers in this way, because books that impact get remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's jump right into Death's perspective. Death is the first person narrator of The Book Thief, and in a way it's a godlike perspective that could be mistaken for omniscient because he does know what's happening all over the world and what the characters are thinking and feeling. But he's still a first person narrator because he's still telling the reader what he thinks about these characters, and he doesn't fully understand humans. This makes him a first person narrator and not just an omniscient voice reporting what's happening. An example of this is the passage. He'd have been glad to see her kissing his bomb hit lips. Yes, I know it. In the darkness of my dark beating heart, I know. He'd have loved it, all right? You see, even death has a heart. Throughout the novel, death is trying to figure out why people do think, act, and even die the way they do. He is, in a way, baffled. By humanity. This is why he becomes interested in Liesel, the actual protagonist of the story. Death is one of those narrators who is an onlooker, not the main character. Death's non-humanness is a huge part of the success of this book and the success of his first-person narration. He can see things that are happening in different places in the world and what different characters are thinking and feeling, so the reader gets to know more than any human character does. Death is also interesting because of what he chooses to focus on and what he finds interesting. Instead of talking about basically his job, what happens to people after they die and where he takes them when he collects their souls, he's interested in this little girl who's a book thief. Because a person or a character wouldn't be interested in the mundane thing that they do every day. You wouldn't get up every morning and be really excited to tell your friends about your bathroom routine. Death is not excited to tell his readers about his job. He is excited to tell them about this little girl who he's witnessing grow up and change and be affected by the world around her. This is something to consider when it comes to your own narrators. What would they talk about? Would they talk about the aspects of the story that you need them to or not? Are they the right person to tell your story? Do they have the voice and the will to tell it the way you need them to? One way Zuckick really gets Death's unique point of view across is through the form of the text on the page. Because Death thinks differently than humans, his sections of thoughts and asides to the reader are set apart from the regular text and stylized differently. An example of this is a realization. A statue of the book thief stood in the courtyard. It's very rare, don't you think, for a statue to appear before its subject has become famous? In these asides, Death is commenting on the events that are happening, and he's letting you know what his thoughts and opinions are on those events. He's sharing his perspective with you, and he's talking directly to you as the reader. By bolding and centering the text like this, Zuckick is letting the reader know when Death is sharing his thoughts and opinions and speaking directly to the reader, and when he's reporting other characters' thoughts and opinions. Zuckick also has a unique format for the start of the parts and chapters. For example, part two starts with Part two, The Shoulder Shrug, featuring A Girl Made of Darkness, The Joy of Cigarettes, A Town Walker, Some Dead Letters, Hitler's Birthday, 100% Pure German Sweat, the Gates of Thievery, and a Book of Fire. I should note the first two lines of this part have different text. It's reminiscent of an old typewriter, and that kind of adds to the tone of death being an eternal being. 
Notice in this list, we are seeing what death thinks is interesting and important and represents the scene or the event as a whole. This also spikes the reader's curiosity. What is a girl made of darkness? What book is on fire? Those images are vivid and interesting and a reader wants to know more. So it's doing two things here, like most aspects of your writing should. The bolding, line breaks, different fonts, and white space of these sections really stand out in the way death and eternal being would stand out to a mortal like the reader. They emphasize death's perspective and his role as storyteller. You can do this in your own writing. How would your character present their story? Would they write it in a series of letters or blog posts or email? Would they dictate it to someone else? Would they share it in a casual conversation? The tone and the way that looks on the page is going to be different. So think about how your character would narrate the story. Another important aspect of Death's perspective in The Book Thief is his word choice. Zucket fills The Book Thief with elegant descriptions as well as Death's voice and Liesel's. Which words he chooses to use lets the reader know who that thought belongs to. And it also lets the reader know whether Death is talking directly to them or he's reporting what's happening around him. When Death interjects and speaks directly to the reader, it is in short, often sentence fragments. And that's to show that Death isn't human, so he thinks differently. It's often reminiscent of poetry where each word is doing double duty. Not only does Zuckett pick the word for its definition, he picks it for the image it conveys and the tone. For example, a book on fire creates a vivid mental picture of an object being destroyed. It also represents the destruction of knowledge. And in the context of Nazi Germany, that's a particularly poignant image. There was a lot of censorship happening and there was lots of literal book burning and knowledge destruction. These are moments when we get to see what death thinks. There are also moments when we're being shown what Liesel thinks. For example, whenever she walked to and from school now, Liesel was on the lookout for discarded items that might be of value to a dying man. She wondered at first why it mattered so much. How could something so seemingly insignificant give comfort to someone? A ribbon in the gutter, a pine cone on the street. Death wouldn't care to give these things to a dying man. His job is to take people who die to whatever happens next. He's not the comforter. Liesel's character is a comforter. She's the one who's really hoping this character will pull through. We get to see her thoughts through death, though. Liesel probably doesn't think the exact words give value to a dying man. She's young. That's probably not the vocabulary she would use for that thought. But because Death is narrating it, Zucka can use that language. Word choice is another aspect of the text writers should think about when they're creating a first-person narrator. Your character is going to have a different vocabulary than you do as a writer because they have different life experiences. They have a different education level, a different way of speaking. Be aware of that. Develop that. Let your character become unique and stand on their own, the way Death does in The Book Thief leave you with a few comments from an editor about The Book Thief by Marcus Zuckick. I don't typically like war stories that much. I don't enjoy it when characters and places I become attached to die and get destroyed. But I did appreciate The Book Thief and I did enjoy it despite it being a war story. And that's because The Book Thief is transcending that trope to appeal to a wider audience. It also has a magical element to it with death being the narrator. And it appeals to people who don't normally like that sort of fantasy magical element in their stories. For the same reason, it's transcending that trope. These two different readerships are both going to enjoy The Book Thief because Zuckig fully immerses them in Death's perspective and in the setting and the characters. Zuckig brings Death to life by fully diving into his character and using the form of the text on the page and specific word choice to really let the reader get to know death as a character. Committing to your narrator and your perspective like this is something other authors can learn to do in their own writing. How can your character stand out? 
how can you use your narrator to appeal to a audience larger than your standard genre audience? For me, it was Dust's perspective and point of view that invited me into this war story. When you're creating your first person narrator, think about that. What would their sentence structure look like? What would their word choice be? How is their perspective different? And what makes it the right choice for your story? You can use a unique perspective to appeal to a wider audience, or you can layer different types of stories, like this fantasy element of death and a war story, to appeal to a larger audience. What are your thoughts on The Book Thief? Did you find the form and perspective interesting and an addition to the story, or did it kind of hamper your reading experience? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please like. And for more videos like this that are dissecting the techniques and aspects of books that are working, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it impacts readers, because writing that impacts gets remembered and recommended. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. You'll also find a chart there comparing the different types of point of view. Now it's your turn. How can you use a unique perspective, form, and word choice to ignite your ink?